Good morning. Hi, this is Joe Chang with Vanderbilt University. And it's a pleasure to introduce this, uh, this session of Operative Grand Rounds for the AANS. Uh, with us today is Dr. Charlie Branch, who's currently the professor and chairman at the Department of Neurosurgery at Wake Forest University. You know, some of the things that we do with minimally invasive surgery uh, regarding sagittal balance are things that we take for granted. Personally, we've been, personally, I've seen a lot of cases where patients who've undergone minimally invasive surgery end up in slight kyphosis with adjacent segment problems due to that, uh, that issue. And I hope Dr. Branch will be able to give us some insight into how we can avoid this. With that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Branch. Charlie? Thank you, Joe. Good morning to you and I guess everyone who's listening. Um, this um, particular lecture is uh, the, actually a continuation of one that we um, finished uh, earlier uh, that looked at a, a hybrid uh, mini open or minimally invasive technique for lumbar fusion. And um, certainly I'd encourage you to, 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 to take a look at that and hear some of our thoughts there because this will build on that. And, and today I'd like to really uh, look at, 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 the, at the concept of that, that, that preserving or correcting lumbar lordosis, um, even in the degenerative patient, really begins at that first fused segment. And so how can we uh, uh, not only embrace MIS, but really embrace the concept of lumbar lordosis or spinal deformity correction preservation at every level. So I hope this will be of some value to you. Let's, let's, let's move on into it. First things first, I guess, I'm, uh, my disclosures are I, I function as a consultant, an educational and product development consultant for Medtronic. And some of the devices you'll see in these lectures, uh, I've actually received royalty payments for um, um, through my work with Wake Forest University. We have talked about minimally invasive spine surgery, and there's not a clear definition. Everyone's got a bit of a uh, personal bias, a percutaneous endoscopic uh, tubular retractors, uh, navigation. But, but frankly, uh, I think we can all agree that the goals of contemporary spine surgery are uh, much more um, germane. Uh, we need to minimize tissue disruption. We must maximize the therapeutic benefit or value as we talk about it. Minimize the radiation exposure to the surgeon and the team. Um, minimize blood loss. Uh, minimize uh, inefficiencies in the operating room or with resources in the hospital. And, and, and last but maybe even first, optimize the learning curve so that a, a, an older guy like me uh, can, can learn a new technology or new technique and, and, and add value to my patient without having to go through a protracted period exposing myself or patients to maybe some increased uh, risk from learning. Now, MIS has uh, really sort of snowballed in its, uh, in its popularity, I guess, over the last decade as technology uh, uh, and interest has, has, has gained, you know, is there a benefit in these older patients that we all take care of? Uh, I think the, the concept of reduced blood loss, reduced infection rate, reduced hospital stays, and uh, even in these large patients who are deconditioned, there's growing evidence that, uh, that there's, there's value with the minimally invasive techniques, especially if we look at our uh, uh, BAS and ODI scores uh, you know, postoperatively. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that concept is valid, uh, although we'll talk a little bit about when and how we should use it. Um, but I'm, I, I've got to add to that the, the fact that these MIS techniques should not just accomplish those goals, but they really should restore and maintain lumbar lordosis or correct a coronal and sagittal deformity. Uh, and maintain spinal balance until fusion, in addition to these uh, efficiencies and, and, and learning curve opportunities. Does this resonate with you, Joe, at this point? Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things that we had talked about previously was, you know, a lot of my practice actually is revision surgeries. And so in the past, we've seen so many people who've undergone minimally invasive surgery were placed on, say, a Wilson or Andrews frame in lordosis to make you know, placing the tubes and the K-wires easier, say for an L4 to S1 fusion, and inadvertently fuse really with a flat back or loss of uh, lordosis. And, you know, not, 